Hey everyone, welcome to my library. My name is Melissa and today I am doing my February wrap up. So I read, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. I read five books and I DNF'd one. So I am gonna go chronologically for this wrap up. Um, it just makes more sense in my head and it kind of seemed like people were indifferent either way, um, whether I did chronologically or by rating. So. Yeah, I'm just going to do chronologically. The first book that I read in February, I started for my buddy reads, and it is All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. So yes, I started this on February 1st. Let's excuse my janky, uh, my janky nail polish today. I forgot to reapply uh, before filming, and I'm too lazy to go do that, so... <laughs> I really enjoyed this book. Um, it was beautiful writing and the plot was really engaging towards the end. However, the very middle and some of the beginning was pretty slow and it was kind of hard to get into and connect with the characters. And so I originally gave this book four stars, but upon further reflection, it's more like a three and a half stars for me. So. Yes, I gave it three and a half stars. I read it for Historathon and it fulfilled the prompt, um, no people on the cover, because obviously. <laughs> this follows two characters, one named um, Marie, who is blind, and another named Werner, who is part of the Hitler Youth Program, and um, or kind of like a regime of the Hitler Youth Program, from what I understand. Yes, it's following their there are two storylines that end up merging and it's kind of um the plot progression is kind of showing how their 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 plots merge and basically what happens is marie um she it she ends up becoming blind she was not born blind and so her dad ends up teaching her how to maneuver and navigate the world around her which was my favorite part of this book just learning that and just feeling the emotions that these two the dad and and his daughter have for each other and the love he has for her oh it was so sweet um and then werner's perspective is all about him kind of seeing his nation fall to pieces and his pride for his his leaders of his nation obviously um go down and uh yeah he just kind of has this moral he questions his morals a lot in this book and so it's kind of his epiphany of coming into realizing what is right and what is wrong and so yes this is a really good book i understand why people love this book um it's very different the writing is different it's set in present tense so it's a little hard to get used to at first um it won the pulitzer prize actually and so anyways i i ended up enjoying it but not loving it and so three and a half stars is my final rating for this book and thank you to everyone who participated in this read along with me i had a ton of people participate and it was just so fun on my discord reading this um i know we all had mixed opinions on it whether some people gave it four stars some people dnf'd and it's totally fine either way don't worry about dnfing books <laughs> if you're not loving it um yeah i'm just super glad that you all ended up participating and um yeah, thank you so much. The next book I ended up finishing via audio was Just Like Heaven by Julia Quinn. So this is the first book in the Smythe Smith Quartet and uh, I really loved it. This is the perfect book to read after you've read Bridgerton. So um, the last book on the way to the wedding in that series, um, the timeline coincides with this book. And so it was really fun to just pick this up after finishing that series. I did want to highlight, I ended up giving it three and a half stars, and I did want to highlight that the scene from Bridgerton Netflix show where he says, I burn for you, the classic scene is in this book. So if you are looking for that book in written form or that scene in written form, you'll find it here. Yeah, I when I started listening and I heard that, I was like, oh my gosh. So yeah, I had to tell you guys. Um, but basically, this follows, what's her name? Honoria. 
Um, Honoria is part of the Smythe Smith family and is required to do the musicale every year and dreads it every year. And uh, the trope for this one is brother's best friend. So yes, her brother um, is just a couple years older than her and is best friends with Marcus, who is the hero. And um, she ends up becoming friends with Marcus over that um, connection with, you know, her tagging along with her brother, um, him getting annoyed with it, obviously, as, as kids. Um, and then she ends up knowing Marcus, and then it's kind of their progression into both of them being in and part of the ton, and uh, her just dreading every season, <laughs> and also realizing she has to marry, and then Marcus getting jealous of any of the suitors she ends up pursuing. And then, uh, yeah, it just kind of goes from there. It was really fun. I enjoyed it, and three and a half stars. I'm can I actually have the next book in the series on uh, in my Libby app, in my queue. So uh, whenever I feel the inkling to read that, I will and report back on the next book in the Smythe Smith Quartet. So um, the next book I tried to read and DNF'd was The Yankee Widow by Linda Lale Miller. Yeah, I so I got far in this book, actually. Um, I got 150 pages in, which is about halfway, and I just realized I was super bored. If you guys watched my, um, my vlog recently, you'll know the whole story, but yeah, I just got super bored. I was waiting for this to kind of... It, from the back and from the synopsis, it hints at a romance and the romance was not happening for me. Like I was like, it hasn't even started and it's 150 pages in. And I know this is more a historical fiction than a romance, even though Linda Lael Miller is a romance author, um, but there was not enough plot for it not, like if it's historical fiction, I need more plot if there's not gonna be a romance element. Um, and yeah, either way it just fell short. So I DNF'd. The next book I read is Ross Poldark by Winston Graham. Oh my goodness, I loved this book. Um, I ended up giving it four stars, which is really good for me. <laughs> I actually didn't have, sorry butter's in the shot, but um, I didn't have any five stars this month, which was kind of disappointing, but I've only had one five star this whole year. So um, I'm very strict with them. But anyways, I really enjoyed this book. Um, this obviously follows a man named Ross Poldark who he comes back from the, um, the Revolutionary War to find that his um, betrothed, like who his, his lover was, was um, is now engaged to his cousin. So he's heartbroken, obviously. And uh, he also comes back to his dad who has passed away and... Um, his inheriting this uh, really run down estate that is his now. And so the whole plot of this book is him trying to get his estate back running. His estate revolves around mines. And so I found that really actually quite interesting, learning about all these mines. And then he also ends up picking up from town kind of this girl whose name is Demelza, who is uh obviously been abused at home and so he takes her in as a uh, kitchen maid and so um yeah he they both have this kind of budding relationship and it was really cute that element of the story was amazing i loved it and i loved demelza's character so much um it's very rags to riches in quite a literal sense and so um yeah, just that whole storyline was adorable. And so I ended up giving this four stars mainly because I was unsure where the plot was going. There was no main conflict in this book as far as I could tell. And so I know it's a builder book. It's essentially, you know, a, a preface to the whole series. And so I'm very excited to read the next book. I have it on my shelves. It's called Demelza and I can't wait to dive in. I also ended up watching the first five episodes of the first season of this book or this TV show and <clears throat> that covers this first book. And so I didn't want to continue obviously and spoil myself for the second book, 
but I loved it. It was so well done and um, very true to the the book. So yeah, if you've watched the, the show, I encourage you to read the book as well. You'll get more, obviously reading a book is such more of a, an immersive experience, but, um, but yeah, both are great. So there's that book, this book. Oh, and I did this for the Historathon, um, excuse me, this counted for, um, <clears throat> read a book with a person's name on the cover, as well as I counted it for a, uh, a war that is not World War II, because the very first part of this book is uh, the Revolutionary War. <laughs> I know it really kind of doesn't count because there's not a real war element in this book, but we're gonna count it. <laughs> so yeah, this was this book. The next book I read was Via Audio, and um, it doesn't fulfill any historathon prompts or anything. It was mainly just because I'm on wait list for these books for weeks and weeks. So when they come in through my Libby app, I immediately check them out and have to listen to them. And so that was Making Up by Lucy Parker. Uh, I loved, so this book is the third book in the London Celebrity series. The first book being Act Like It. I loved Act Like It. I gave it five stars and it made it onto my favorites list last year, if you guys remember. And so um, I've been reading the series and <clears throat> this book is actually my least favorite in the series. It's number three and it was just kind of lackluster. I still ended up giving it three stars. It met, it met the basic requirements for a romance. I really liked the characters. Um, it follows a woman who is an acrobat and she kind of fits the manic pixie dream girl, uh, not trope, but that kind of vibe. She's got pink hair and um, her name is Trix. And then uh, the, the hero in this story, he is a special effects makeup artist. And um, they are friends from college who end up having a enemies to lovers to no, enemies to friends with benefits to lovers is kind of the progression of the book. Um, but the thing that I didn't love about it was the whole conflict of them being enemies and them kind of like bantering with each other and like hate flirting with each other gets resolved in less than a chapter. Um, they just basically have one conversation to resolve everything that they originally hated about each other and then it was like okay now now we're just friends and blah 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 so I just didn't buy that <laughs> um I was kind of just frustrated that like that whole conflict was resolved so quickly and then um the other thing that I didn't love about it was um I also just didn't feel like there was a central conflict in the story there was nothing that was progressing it besides just their relationship I guess um, but there was no question as to whether they were going to be together. Um, so anyways, it was just kind of a confusing story. But <clears throat> the thing I wanted to mention about this book was uh, there's a hedgehog in this book whose name is Reggie. So it's Reggie the Hedgie. And I needed more Reggie. <laughs> I just loved that idea so much and every time he was mentioned they they have to take care of him for his sister who um is going through some stuff so they're they're watching this hedgehog and I just I needed more of that so um but anyways yeah I gave it three stars it was good but not great so the last book I ended up reading in February and I did this as an impromptu buddy read with a couple of my friends over on Instagram and then we ended up um, con uh, merging into Discord to chat about it was The Fulfillment by Laverl Spencer. Yes, I finally read another Laverl Spencer. You guys, this story is bonkers. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, but it's so good. <laughs> so what this story is, is it's about this woman who is um, married to this man, married for seven years. What's her name? I just forgot it. Mary. So it's about this woman named Mary who is married to Jonathan for seven years and Jonathan is infertile. And so both of them desperately want a child 
And so Jonathan ends up thinking up this idea and um, asks his brother, whose name is Aaron, to uh, provide, <laughs> basically be the father to, and have sex with Mary to have a kid. And um, he shares everything kind of, <laughs> um, he grew up with Aaron and they're very close. They're, they're really, really close brothers. And so he kind of asks them both, hey, like, let's, let's figure this out and maybe have this be the solution. And um, Mary and Aaron have also a very close relationship. It's very obvious at the very beginning of this book that they're kind of like, they don't, obviously they're not, it's not like a fair situation, but um, they're very touchy-feely with each other. Like, just just a little more close than normal, I, I would say, with in-laws. I don't know how to describe that, but you can tell that like if they if she wasn't married, they probably would pursue something. So anyways, um, yeah, they both hate Jonathan for proposing this idea because it's just made it really awkward between everybody. Um, but Jonathan ends up going away um, to buy a bull that they live on this this ranch um, and so this farm. And so anyways, he leaves. And obviously tensions rise between um, Aaron and Mary. And so, yeah, it's kind of that whole situation of what happens when Jonathan leaves and then what happens when he comes back after they obviously do it. <laughs> so um, yeah, it was a crazy story, but and I kept, tr I kept, turning the pages because I wanted to know how it ended. I could not see an HEA in, in sight. Um, and that was kind of how everyone was feeling in the Discord group. We were all like, how the heck does this story end well? <laughs> and uh, I won't spoil it for you if you wanna read it, but um, yes, it does end well. And I ended up giving this a three and a half stars. The, the reason why I didn't give it higher than that was, um, I, I just needed more buildup between the characters. We're kind of just dropped into this story of Mary and Jonathan who've lived together for, or married for seven years. And then all of a sudden, um, Aaron and Mary are, to, are, are flirting and stuff with each other. And I just wasn't buying it that like for the past seven years, there hasn't been any of that between them. I, I was like, there's no way if if they have this kind of connection, this kind of relationship that they haven't ever, like, it just, I just didn't buy that. And then um, the other reason I didn't get a, give it a three and a half stars was um, there there's a lot of elements of um, parenting and um, love for children and just kind of that connection between parent and child that I couldn't connect with because I don't have children myself. And so I think some of the women on the Discord probably connected even more so to this book because there is very much a theme of motherhood and parenting um, that I just kind of didn't grasp with this. So that was the other reason I didn't um, love it. But yeah, I still really enjoyed it. And I'm so glad that we kind of just did this impromptu buddy read. It was really fun. And I can't wait to pick up another Liberal Spencer. Um, she's just such an impressive author, such an impressive writer. I loved the writing in this book. This was her first novel actually, and it still showed so much promise. So um, fun story about this one. She actually sent this as a draft to Kathleen E. Woodowis. And it was actually Kathleen E. Woodowis who ended up automatically, after she read it, sending the draft to her publisher and getting this published. So um, she ends up dedicating this book to her and some other people, but she ends up dedicating it to her, which I thought was so cool. <laughs> so yeah, that's the story of this book and I, I really enjoyed it. So those are, um, these are the, what, five books I read um, that I own and then obviously making up as well. Um, it was a good month. It wasn't a great month because, you know, I didn't have any five stars, but 
that's okay. I have really high hopes for March. Um, please let me know in the comments below what your favorite book of February was, or if you read one of these books and, it, and your thoughts below as well for those. Um, please like and comment. I reply to every single comment. And please subscribe if you want to see more from me. And I will see you guys in another video. Bye!